testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? This has been a round of a century. I was not supposed to win this. So now you guys are listening because we did win. And I can glorify God the way I want to glorify him. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It's good to be back. We're going to get into the Inouye Fulton uh, preview and prediction. Um, we're less than 24 hours from that fight. I'm into this. I uh, get my official prediction and preview. Um, but before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, and all forms of social media. Quick Hits comes at you every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day, to keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. Uh, please follow us uh, also on Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. All proceeds from that channel go to Autism Research and Recovery. Um, please, uh, um, please follow us there as well uh, text, uh, at Texas Boxing Scene. Let's get into today's show because this is will be the best fight of the year so far. Um, I, I know we got that bigger thing on Saturday, but as of July 25th, 2023, in a way, Fulton is the biggest fight of the year thus far. Uh, no, I don't want to hear about Tank Davis and, and Ryan Garcia. This is a far better fight. It's a bigger fight. It's for, um, but what we have here is in a way jumping up another weight class to challenge Stephen Fulton uh, for his WBC and WBO titles. Uh, in a way, the challenger is pound for pound number one, two, or three on nearly all pound for pound lists. I had him at number two behind Usyk. Um, he started at 108. Won his first title. Oh, I mean, he's just turning 30 now. He's no longer a kid. He's still thinking of him as a, as a really young guy. He's not. He won his first world title all the way back in 2014 um, at 108. He skipped 112, went to 115, and then went to 118. Um, now he's going to 122. So in essence, I understand it's just his fourth weight class, but he did skip one. So in all essence, he's come up. You know, this is his fifth weight class, right? Because he's four, plus he skipped one. And I understand he's a special fighter and a gifted fighter. That may be a bridge too far for him. That honestly may be just a little bit too much uh, of a jump up. It's, it's too much weight. It's fifth weight class. Um, if he wins, it's a spectacular performance. I understand he's a special fighter. He's a gifted fighter. He's fundamentally sound, perfect kind of box to punch a KO artist of that style. Like You can't have that kind of Japanese style uh, straight up and down, kind of in the pocket. Um, style better than what Inoue does. He's, for lack of a better word, he's a monster. That being said, I, I, I think um, Stephen Fulton is about the most complete fighter there is. Um, I think, uh, you know, I consider little guys anything below 126. Uh, so this would be a little guy. I, I think he is uh, as complete as they get. Um, this is a guy that fought Angelo Leo and Brandon Figueroa, two of the best inside fighters, not in just that weight class, but Figueroa is one of the best inside fighters in the sport. He fought them both in a phone booth and beat both of them, although I, I, I thought he lost to uh, Figueroa. Um, David Sutherland was actually the only one who handed in the correct score. Dave Moretti and Tim Cheatham handed in a, a, a greatest 116-112 scorecards uh, for, for uh Fulton. But Fulton has the wins over Isaac Avalar, which is uh, you know, less than a degree. He's got the win over K-Guy, Angelo Leo, Brandon Figueroa, and Daniel Roman. Uh, those are, are, are the wins. It's, it's a good resume. It's not quite a pound-for-pound -pound resume yet, but it's very, very close. A win over Inouye propels him up that list. Um, I, I, I think if he wins this list, I think he goes to number two on my pound-for-pound -pound list. If... if, if uh, in a way, loses. I don't fault him much. I don't knock him for losing to a guy three uh, who would be, in his essence, fighting a guy in his fifth weight class. You know, I, I don't I, – that doesn't bother me. That would be similar to Crawford losing to a middleweight, right? He's not at 35, 40, 47, 54, 60. Like, if, I wouldn't fault him too much for that, right? Like, I, I wouldn't fault him a, a whole lot for that. And I won't fault um, – and I guess I'm showing my hand. I am picking Fulton to win. I, I I think the way the fights goes is I think it's 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 at an essence three fights. You have the early rounds, the middle rounds, and the late rounds. And I think Fulton wins the early rounds, the late rounds. I think um, in a way rallies in the middle rounds, but he can get on the inside. He can kind of slow him down. But remember, Fulton is the bigger, stronger guy naturally. 
And he's a really good inside fighter. Like I said, he outboxed Brandon Figueroa on the inside. Did really good. Uh, Brandon Figueroa is a massive guy. He's a featherweight now, right? And he can stand his own. And he can and he can stand his own. He can bully in a way around on the inside. And I think what we're going to see is the fight starts on Fulton's terms. The first three, let's say four rounds, I think Fulton has a narrow lead. Uh, boxing him, jabbing him, circling, moving, right? I, I, I think... Through four, you got Fulton up a little bit. I think after that, the fight moves into Inouye's terms. And I think Inouye does his best work in those middle rounds where he gets on the inside. He's landing, you know, he's landing power shots and he's slowing him down. But as he's slowing him down, Fulton is leaning on and pushing and scoring with plenty of his own shots because Fulton's really good on the inside. Um, And then I, I think, you know, through those four rounds, I think maybe, you know, Inouye ekes him out a little bit most of those rounds, but they're very close, and Fulton takes some of those rounds, right? And we get to, let's say, it's championship rounds. You know, I think we have a fairly even fight through, like, let's say, nine rounds. I think on 10, 11, 12, um, I think Fulton sees things slipping away. He gets back to boxing. I think, in a way, it's starting to fatigue from being in with the bigger guy. Fulton gets back on his bicycle a little bit, starts jamming, starts boxing, starts moving. Right. Um, I don't want to say he survives, but he gets more movement and, and in a way is slowing down at that point. And I think I don't want to say tease, tease off on it, but he starts landing clean shots at long range. Um, and, and he clearly wins the end of the fight. And I think that is ultimately the difference. So I'm going to take Fulton by a very, very – it may even be like a split decision, but I'm going to take Fulton by narrow decision. I'm going to, my official prediction is going to be a split decision. I think it's one of those fights where the observers say, wow, this is a great fight, but Fulton won. And uh, you know, I haven't seen the judges yet. I don't know if they've been announced. Um, but I, I think this is a fight where Fulton – Great fight, competitive fight where, where Fulton wins clearly, and the scorecards are a little closer than the fight actually was. But it was a good fight, so we don't complain about it, and the right guy wins. So I'm gonna take Fulton. Um, and I, I again I, I think if Fulton wins, which I'm predicting by split decision, he goes to number two on my pound for pound list by beating it in a way. I can't put him at one because he's fighting, he's still in one weight class. Um, and he's the bigger guy, right? So I, I still have Usyk, who is undisputed, has seven belts in two weight classes, beat the bigger guy in Joshua, and then cleaned out his natural division. So, it, it, I mean, it would take a lot for Fulton to jump up. And I, I don't think it anyway, drops much more than three for losing to Fulton. Because, again, it's a guy bigger than him. I don't you know, think Fulton – I don't think in a way should win this fight, right? Like, if he's fighting the best 122 in the world. I think he should lose, right? So I'm not knocking him for fighting a guy who, in essence, is, he would be in his fifth weight class. I'm just like, I wouldn't knock Crawford if Crawford fought a middleweight, right? Crawford's not 35. What's five weight classes? Four, what's five weight classes? 35, 40, 47, 54, 60. If he went up to 60 and lost to a middleweight, I'm not going to kill Crawford for that, right? That's, in essence, what Inouye did. So I'm not mad about him losing. I'm not going to drop him. So I would have Fulton, uh, Fulton 2, Usyk 1, Fulton 2, right? Then three, I would probably have Inouye for the time being. And then four, Charlo. And then five would be is Spence. Then six is Crawford. We're going to get some clarity there. We'll, we'll see. That guy probably goes to three. I think the winner of Spence Crawford goes to three. I'm going to do a prediction show and let that. Um, and in a way, it may drop to four. But I don't see him dropping much below four because it's not it, it, it's not that big of a deal. He's fighting a guy much bigger than him. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. Um, let me know what you guys think of the fight. It is July 24th, 2023. Uh, from Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside 